Hi, I'm Joss. Hi, I'm Claudia. And this is the Let's Get Down to Business podcast. We're two cousins on opposite ends of the globe with a lot of opinions about figure skating. And we're here to deliver the news, recaps, and join y'all in screaming every time Daisuke Takahashi appears on camera. Hey, 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 Joss. How are you? <laughs> I am hungover from recording and editing Rust Telecom Cup episode. Indeed, me too. Like, chuck in some actual alcoholic hungoverness, and that's me in its entirety. So, yeah, we are both very hungover from the huge weekend that was Rust Telecom Cup. And now, like, not even what, a couple of days later, not even a week later, we get thrust right into NHK, and we were like, oh my God. But we were also equally. Very, very excited because we get a whole fresh new group of faces and programs to watch. Yes. And frankly, this year, it's been a lot of Russian figure skating between been. all the 28 million stages of the <laughs> Russian Cup, Russian Test Skates, and then Rostelicum Cup coming up as Russian Nationals. There's just a lot of Russians in our sphere right now. Yeah. Did you um, did you pick up any snacks to prepare for NHK? Because I know I sure did. You oh got me gosh. on the Hot Cheetos bandwagon. Hot Cheetos bandwagon. Uh, so over here, uh, Trader Joe's has many, many holiday goodies. My lovely husband surprised me the other day with hot cocoa snowmen. So basically, you make a mug of warm milk of your choice. And you put these snowmen into the mug and they basically kind of just like melt and create hot cocoa. <laughs> it's oh amazing. This is like, it, this is like edible lush bath bombs. This yes. is amazing. The one thing I miss from being in the US at this like moment in time is the peppermint hot chocolates. You keep tweeting about them and I keep going... <laughs> I really, really want some, but I'm like, I don't necessarily want a super hot drink on a 35 degree Celsius day. So like, <laughs> oh my gosh, peppermint hot chocolates uh, are so good. Uh, yes. We also have Jingle Jangle, which is a special mix of chocolate mint treats from Trader Joe's. And also I have white truffle popcorn, which is just as glorious as it sounds. <laughs> what the hell? It's that vegan. sounds amazing. It sounds like diabetes. But like, very it good. also sounds very, very, good. very, very good. Oh my gosh. All right. So uh, lest we become a food podcast, why don't we move into <laughs> some figure skating news? I mean, we could very well become a food podcast. Yes, if definitely. If we just click a few buttons in the Apple podcast store. But uh, let's move into <laughs> some figure skating news. I guess the first piece of really big and potentially exciting slash hazardous news question mark is that uh worlds in stockholm sweden is considering getting together a world's bubble so much like the orleans hotel and arena in vegas where they had skate america um they are considering doing a i guess a full-on quarantine uh, like a meal plan sort of thing where everyone eats and resides within the hotel um because from to my knowledge the hotel is also attached to the rink in stockholm um, so they're considering doing something like that for Worlds. But interestingly enough, Canada is also considering not sending any of their athletes to Worlds, which I find so fascinating for various things like Olympics places and obviously Worlds rankings, everything like that. Just a lot of very interesting and potentially dangerous non-COVID safe things going on here. Yeah, like, so Sweden, we all know, isn't the best in terms of COVID uh, eradication and a kind of lockdown safety type deal. But it's really great that they're considering that. But yeah, like you said, Canada considering not sending any of their athletes to Worlds. I I mean, sending everyone to Nebelhorn to do Olympic qualification will be hella stressful. Like this... Yeah, I mean, there has been talk around postponing the 2022 Winter Olympics to 2023. There's been talk about, um, you know, shifting test event locations from Beijing and in China to somewhere else, to somewhere else. So there's a lot going on, but I don't know. We're just, I think it'd be really, really awesome if we could get a really safe event for worlds and Europeans and all oh, of yeah. that. Oh, yeah, totally. But you know, safety of the athletes definitely come first. Like chucking something together just for the sake of an event happening, just, yeah, probably not the best idea. 
Yeah, and and I mean, as safe as worlds could potentially be, right, these athletes are still coming into contact with potentially the folks who are cooking the food, serving the food to them, you know, like doing the, up their hotel rooms, uh, people in hotel management, the people who are obviously uh, running the event at the rink, just a lot of contact that, you know, potentially may not need to happen in this pandemic that we have going on. But I mean, obviously, we would love if there was an actual world's event. Like we were saying, we are very parched for figure <laughs> skating. But uh, something else that I find very interesting is that junior worlds has been canceled. Yes, I think I think this is definitely the right decision. But it also kind of speaks volumes about where the ISU's priorities lie at the moment, because they haven't canceled senior worlds. So, you know, they, you know that they're really focusing on trying to get something to happen for Senior Worlds and getting it right. And so they're just like, all right, Junior Worlds, we just can't really, <laughs> we can't deal. So let's just cancel it. And fair enough. I mean, I'd love to see Camila Valieva take the crown again <laughs> and second and third place be filled by more Russians. <laughs> and obviously, like some of the folks that we saw, some of the athletes that we saw this weekend at the NHK Trophy are would have been competing in Junior Worlds, worlds potentially. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. So just kind of a sad experience, I guess, for them this season. Uh, but we'll talk about how, you know, we believe it could have potentially impacted their skates at NHK. Um, but I guess the next piece of news comes from Russia as... I guess most of our news from this season comes from. Yes, this is a bit of a bit of a funny one or interesting, however you might take it. But Yevgeny Plushenko went on the popular Russian talk show Urgant and talked about how his biggest dream was to build a figure skating complex where top athletes would be able to live permanently and have all their needs met. So like, you know, access to skating, choreography, going to the gym, you know, meals, like nutrition and studying for university even. He said that, you know, the most successful and super talented kids would have access to these conditions for free. And the current list of skaters uh, include Aliona Kostornaya and Sasha Trusova. What do you think about this? I think I find this fascinating because uh, have I really ever been in one singular place where the entirety of my needs list has been met? <laughs> Not really. Maybe just in my bedroom. Like that's maybe the only place in the entire world where all of my needs will be met. So I find this very, uh, <laughs> I'm interested to see what this would look like for them. I've seen like uh, some photos of what the rooms look like and in the cottages that the athletes would stay in and they bougie they're really really bougie and you know i have to admit though this is something that younger me also dreamt of and i think even today a little like my inner child is like screaming at this going like oh my god this is a bloody fabulous um but i just it's just so <laughs> it's so interesting in the context of russian skating politics and and all of that so and it's and it's Evgeny Plushenko, the angels of Plushenko, just doing up their whole their whole brand. This makes me want to rename my Animal Crossing island to Angel Island, and uh, getting villagers that most resemble each of our angels of Plushenko here. <laughs> this is an amazing idea. It's a great this idea. This is such a okay. Next episode, we will be giving you a list of. Uh, Angels of Plushenko skaters and their corresponding Animal Crossing villages. <laughs> stay tuned. <laughs> not going to lie, it's probably going to come. So actually stay tuned. We're not joking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why don't we move on to our next piece of news, also from Russia, obviously. Uh, but this piece of news is a little bit sadder. We have Tarasov and Morozov who have withdrawn from the final stage of the Russian Cup, citing that they have pneumonia. Quote unquote pneumonia. Ah, so if y'all weren't aware, Morozov got COVID. I think, I don't know if Yevgenia Tarasova also got COVID, but I, I definitely do know that Vladimir Morozov had COVID like a couple of months ago. And so they, I think, dropped out of a Russian Cup stage. But then they came back for stage three of Russian Cup, I believe. And, you know, they had their masks on at the medal ceremony and all that made a made a little buzz about all of that, but now they say that Yevgenia has pneumonia. And I'm like, you mean 
COVID, considering that... Do you mean COVID? <laughs> Cons- you yeah. can say it. Considering that the team already... You said it for Vladimir. Yeah, considering that the team already has exposure to, uh, to COVID, and like many people say, uh, pneumonia is a second-hand infection, so... Hello, COVID. I mean, it's not like we don't know. You can just say it, guys. <laughs> uh, at, at, at this current point in time, they're, they're synonymous with each other. Like, <laughs> come on, guys. But I mean, yeah, pneumonia seems to be a very common thing in Russia. Like, we know that Tuktomishev has gone down with pneumonia in the past. Kolyad has gone down with pneumonia in the past. Like, it's... <laughs> It's a common thing, apparently. Um, and it's gnarly. So I guess uh, wishing her... Gnarly. Yes. Uh, we wish her all the best in her recovery. Hopefully we Definitely. will be able to see her soon. And hopefully no one else on their team gets a uh, quote-unquote pneumonia. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay, let's talk about the NHK trophy, which was... Yes. Which was a very, very... How would you describe it? I would describe it as like chaotic good whereas like oh Rostelecom cup and all the russian cup events are like chaotic evil like chaotic neutral chaotic evil this was like chaotic good i was literally <laughs> just going to say that <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh yes this was chaotic good. i'm glad we're on the same page yeah um but one thing did you see that all the kiss and cry mascot toys had masks on yeah this is a perfect example of chaotic good like How cute. it's happening because like Okay, number one, everyone is so close together in the audience. I was like, do we need to pack the rink like this? But also, everyone in the Kiss and Cry were wearing, I mean, like the stuffed animals in the Kiss and Cry were all wearing masks. I was like, this is chaotic good. I I can deal with this. Yeah, I mean, Japan's well known for being already a mask wearing country. And I'm not too sure about their COVID stats because I've just gone COVID numb, to be honest, Um, as I think a lot of people have as well. But they did manage to pack 3000 people in there. um, And I believe that the Japanese organizers would do all that they can to keep everybody safe and everyone would be following rules, etc. So yeah, I mean, like in Skate America, NHK skaters had their own basket for all their stuff. So it looks like measures were taken. I'm not sure how extensive because they weren't shoved in my face in terms of promotion wise. (laughs) But uh, yeah. I also noted that uh, between the skater and their coach or their accompanying person in the Kiss and Cry, there was a large sheet of plexiglass, which I thought was great. Maybe not entirely necessary since these folks have probably already had exposure to one another in the past uh, little while. Uh, but just kind of a nice, nice measure. Yeah, I mean, there was plexiglass between uh, Keo Sakamoto and the judges, so like they, she couldn't lop their heads off, unfortunately. But you know, safety, right? Safety. <laughs> we're, we're preaching Sa- safety. safety. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I I mean I don't think it would have been my personal choice to pack that many people in one rank, but obviously I am a no NHK trophy organizer. Um but in terms of I guess the actual skating and the athletes, uh we did want to note that some of these folks are coming right off of Japanese Junior Nationals. I know. I think it Oh gosh, it was like these back-to-back things. This is just like uh Sasha Trusova in Rostelicum that we talked about mm-hmm. last week coming right off like a week and a half to two weeks right off of another competition, you know, and I think it could have potentially affected uh the way that they skated here. But yeah. just wanted to make a note of that. I have mixed thoughts about that because, you know, in a traditional season, you'll have back-to-back competitions and it'll be all, you know, very quote-unquote normal. But you can think of it as trying to simulate, you know, a traditional season. But then again, it's a very quote-unquote unprecedented season. And so something that's like back-to-back really might just be more of a struggle for skaters than anything. Yeah, I think so. Considering that like a lot of these skaters potentially have less ice time, uh, they potentially have less time, if any time, with their coaches in person. Just could just be a little strenuous on their bodies if it's not something they're accustomed to, especially in this environment. But All that being said, why don't we move into the actual competition? Let's start with Ice Dance. Yes, let's start with Ice Dance, an event that a (laughs) lot of people were excited for. Uh, There were only three competitors, so everyone got a medal. Hip, hip, hooray. Uh, How about let's start off, though, with Rikako Fukasi and Aichu Cho. Sure. 
Okay, so I have to say, like 50% of um, the NHK skaters have like awesome ISU bios and the other 50%, it's just like a single, a single ISU bio hobby. And I'm like, ooh, like this is a bit disappointing. However, Ricardo's hobbies are reading. I choose hobbies are cooking, sports, gaming, and studying. Studying? That's not a hobby. Studying is not your hobby, (laughs) ma'am. It's not a hobby. Studying? (laughs) Whoever lists studying as a hobby. Oh my gosh. This is like that (sighs) meme that I see on Instagram. And it's like, it's especially for parents. And it's like, parents taking a shower, going grocery shopping, going to the pet food store. These things are not self-care. They're essentials. You need actual self-care time. So, uh, so uh, <laughs> yes. Mr. Cho, you can take some actual time for your, your self-care and, and your hobbies, just FYI. <laughs> so for Cassie and Cho, they are coached by the whole team at Ice Academy of Montreal. So that is Marie-France Dubray and Patrice Lazon. And their eyes you bio lists like 50,000 million coaches, but it's pretty much they're from I am. Uh, he's originally Canadian, which I found quite interesting. Um, and their rhythm dance was skated to La La Land. Woohoo! However, <laughs> okay, what did you think about their rhythm dance? <laughs> I think it was uh, <laughs> just how I feel a lot of, about a lot of other La La Land programs. It's just a La La Land program. Uh, I thought that it's very interesting because the margin between second and third was quite slim. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, The margin between second and third was quite slim. I don't think I necessarily would have had the margin quite that small. I think I would have, you know, bumped up their points a a few more points. Yeah, I just kind of like didn't really feel a lot with this program. It was kind of just like another La La Land program. Oh, no, I agree. I I didn't really get much from them PCS-wise, I feel, and especially with La La Land. Look, I love La La Land, but I felt nothing. And I think maybe the problem we all have with La La Land programs is that we already know how good La La Land is and the bar is already set so high, irregardless of, like, skating and all of that. So to actually pull off a La La Land program, you need to have, like, that's something, something, right? That's something, something that like Mar and Honda and Yan Han have. And this just didn't have it. Like it, I felt nothing. And they did get the lowest PCS of the night. And I mean, it, but their free dance was to My Funny Valentine and Feeling Good. Both pieces of music I, I'm a stan of. And I really, really like this dress. I think I feel the same way about this free dance as I do about the rhythm dance. Not a lot of feeling here. Nope. Uh, like I'm going to say about Wormoto and Takahashi, I feel like they uh, skate like they have the Holy Spirit between them. <laughs> <laughs> Much like uh, Alexa Skameka Kinnearum and Brandon Fraser. Just not, I don't really quite feel their connection here, if I'm being honest. Yeah, no, I had the same note. Although I did note that he had insanely good posture. Um. <laughs> It's true, and that's something that we all strive to have in these days, especially now that we're sitting and staring at our computer screen. Yes, and I say this while I am hunched over my microphone, (laughs) so. All right, let's move on. Okay, let's move on to everyone's, like, the hot item of the whole event, really, and that is Kanemo Amato and Daisuke Takahashi. Oh, my gosh. Okay, where do we even start with this? Uh, why don't we do ISU bio hobbies? We start with that because Daisuke, we love you, but like you list one thing, music. Oh no. And Kana goes, Kana does one better though. She does music and movies. Oh dear. <laughs> it, it's okay. But, 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 but Kana has the same birthday as me. So like we're all fine. That's there. fine. Third of March. Hello. It makes up for it. Sorry to everyone else born it on the does. other 364 days of the year that that does not make up for. <laughs> um, but they are coached by Marina Zueva, Johnny Johns, Oleg Epstein, and Ilya Chichenko. And okay, they have only been together for nine months. Daisuke only started ice dance training nine months ago. That is, Can we just also talk about like how happy they look? That is wild. Okay. Okay. How so wild let me is tell that? you about 
how I feel about this. So he's 34, okay? And he's a 34-year-old man that has literally just been learning ice dance for nine months. But this actually reminds me of this interview that I saw this past week that Alina Zagidova did. Okay. <laughs> and it was very unfortunate because basically what she said in this interview was like, after the age of 18, there's very little progress that anyone can make. And I'm oh. like, you know what, ma'am? Uh, why ma'am. don't we look at uh, Exhibit A, Daisuke Takahashi, who is has been learning ice dance for nine months at the age of 34. I think there is plenty of progress to be made past the age of 18. 100 so, uh, yeah. percent. Excuse me, Elizabeth Tuktamusheva did a, learned a quad toe in her 20s. Right. And like, yeah. And Ashley Wagner, she pretty much blossomed into the skater we know her as in her 20s. Like, come on. Alina. Yeah. Honey. Please Maybe Alina. you should try out Ice but Dance. You'd anyways. be a lovely Ice Dancer. Anyway. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> Their rhythm dance was to the Mask soundtrack. I love, absolute love. And okay, the ISU commentator was just like, Daisuke said that he put a lot of research into getting into the Jim Carrey mask character. And I was just like, of course, this is such a Daisuke thing to do. I was like, I love it. And the bright yellow pants. I was like, Daisuke, yes. I was like, I will, oh my gosh, I will the take it. Pants. I'll take it. The bright yellow pants were such a Jim Carrey moment. However, her dress this color of like beige slash tan mm-hmm. is in a totally different color family than the yellow pants. We need to study our color wheel, folks. <laughs> <laughs> you really should become a consultant for like everyone's costumes. <laughs> yeah. Study your color wheel. Study your color wheel. You, Always yeah. in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll, link a, we'll link multiple color wheels in our show notes. <laughs> Links to color wheel in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> but... Oh, what did you think of this? Because I actually, there was a moment where I forgot he was Daisuke. And I was just thinking, oh, I really enjoy this rhythm dance. You can really tell, I think in both the rhythm dance and the free dance, that he is very much a singles skater. You can really tell that the gears start turning when the partnering and the dance elements come into play. 100%, yeah. Yeah, and then when they move to do their individual elements, you can really see that he starts to whew, like loosen up. Like you can see the the yeah. sigh of relief. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's he's as they say in young adult fiction, he was holding a breath that that he didn't know that he was holding. <laughs> <laughs> when are we when are we going to talk about the whole? Um, he smiled, but it didn't reach his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite favorite YA line because it's so bad. Um, (laughs) but yeah, you can definitely tell that Daisuke is a little rough on like the dance elements, which is to be expected. Like there's a lot, dance is a whole different world to singles and pair skating. It's a completely different world. Um, for example, the twizzles, um, he was a little bit of rough on. You can, you can kind of see if you're looking at, you know, their skates, you can see that Kana is a lot sharper and knows, you know, where to put her weight on the blade. And like in the lifts, he's turning in the lifts. It's not as, you know, he's not used to it, but you know, nine months, it's, o- it's only been nine months and there's so much to learn in dance. But Kana is such a great partner for Daisuke and you can see how much she supports him. And I was like, oh, this is really heartwarming. Definitely. I, I mean, you can definitely really tell that she has been learning ice dance for a long time. Uh, the movements just yeah. you can't really see the gears turning, you know, when they're coming in and out of elements, when they're coming in and out of lifts. But again, I think that with time, when he starts doing these more, when he starts learning them more, he will hopefully, I mean, take his thinking face off and just kind of like be on the ice present, which yeah. obviously we know that he can do. You know what this reminds me of, though? This reminds me of like Dancing with the Stars when Kane is the pro and Daisuke is like a really, really, really good contestant. And we're just like, oh my gosh, yes. He like the first week out, he's pulling out like a, a really, really good performance. But we're gonna lowball him just to like motivate him to do better. But we know <laughs> that he's gonna be like tens throughout the weeks. But you know, like they actually did not too bad. They really didn't do that bad at all. They they did only hit one key point. But like there are some dance teams who don't hit any key points, and they've been dancing for like years. Um, <laughs> They, they got level three twizzles, rotational lift was a level four, um, their midline step was a level two, 
I think Daisuke dropped a level um, in another step sequence when like Kana got a level three, he only got a level one, but they came second in the rhythm dance. Hello. That's pretty great. Hello. That's pretty great. Hello. That's pretty great. Definitely. Okay. And their free dance. How long has Marina Zueva been waiting to put a La Baya Dare program out there? I feel like she's done like oh La Baya Dare for everybody who hasn't <laughs> actually skated La Baya Dare. And like this is finally coming out and she can like relax. But I'm so She's glad. like, oh my gosh, yeah. I'm going to give it to Daisuke. Oh. He's here. Oh, we, yeah. we can give it to him. And apparently she said that out of every single skater that she's ever worked with, which includes Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer, Gordy Avery and Grinkov, that Daisuke was the most talented skater she has ever worked with. And I was like, yes, yes. Oh my gosh. Sing amazing. his praises, please. Um, but these costumes for La Bayadere, oh, I oh. remember talking to you about this. I'm like, I cannot wait to see the costumes. Genius. And, yeah. Oh, okay. I really enjoyed this program, but did you see Daisuke Takahashi doing a one-legged straight line lift already? Already, after nine already. months. Already, with months. so much speed. And he's got that edge, like, straight, that were, like, hardly any wobbles. And I was like, oh, good on you, Daisuke. I was yes. so happy for him. <laughs> Good on you. However, he did fall on his twizzles. I was like, oh, that's not a cute place to fall. (laughs) No, but I feel like it's a, I feel, I'm not an ice dancer, but I feel like any ice dancer would very much sympathize with Daisuke going, yep, been there, done that. We gotcha. (laughs) Definitely. Uh, His twizzles also kind of look more like spins than they do like twizzles. Yeah. I think that, Mm -hmm. yeah, I think there's definitely a lot of work to be done on his twizzles, obviously. You know, we were, I I didn't really know what to expect. And I think that they had such a good showing that I was like, oh, all right, I can get on this train. It's a good train to be on. I know. Being so neck and neck with Fukase and Cho, I don't think anyone really expected that. No, but I don't I don't think so either, but I mean without happy. Without the fall though, without the fall, Connor and Daisuke would be silver medalists. Just saying, just saying. They they And that's wild. Yeah, it is absolutely wild. And like they should be proud as hell of themselves cuz it was great. Like that that first outing was absolutely great. I mean, Connor and Daisuke have better components and connections than like Rikako and Aichu. Yes. already they do they do also still have a holy spirit feel between them but, yes definitely <laughs> but but obviously you know to to tbd if that will remain once they start skating more together 100 percent, absolutely and let's move on to our golden medalists misato komatsubara and tim coletto oh, they did team so well team coco they did so well this competition um i feel like the ice you commentator didn't believe that they would you know, be so far and away like in terms of points above the other two but they did so 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 well um okay, and they deserve start. it in terms of 100%. the point difference they did 100%. this was such a good weekend for them um and also i know that we noted was the last episode or a couple of episodes ago that uh tim recently received his japanese citizenship yeah yay tim so excited yes very very excited and I'm also so excited that they actually have really good ISU bio hobbies. Well, yeah, as in like they're better than like the one single music and movies and music. Hi, Connor and Daisuke. Um, but her hobbies are photography, Netflix and Spotify. Oh, Netflix and Tim's Spotify. Hobbies. That's interesting. Spotify. Spotify, Spotify shout out. <laughs> and Tim's hobbies are writing, K-pop and gaming. Oh my gosh, Tim Coletto. We like this. <laughs> I want to be your friend. Uh, also, <laughs> can I invite him? Uh, me and my friends have this Discord channel and one of the uh, threads that we have is a K-pop thread. Maybe you could send him a... Uh, discord invite <laughs> i feel like he'd be so on board with that he'd be very on board we we love masato and tim um they are coached by everyone at i am <laughs> um again you know they have like ten thousand million coaches listed in their bio but it is the murray france and patrice um academy their rhythm dance was to dream girls love and my first note was that why are these two so gorgeous together <laughs> 
I truly love them. And you can really, really see how much they support each other, like especially in the kiss and cry on the ice. They feel so connected. They have such great flow, like in and out of their elements when they do their partnering. They just look so connected, much, much more than our silver and bronze medalists. Well, I hope so, considering they are married, but like they're not even like... It is true. They're not like showy about it all. It's just really nice support and like that inner connection you can like really feel. I love these two and I love the fact that they're skating to dream girls truly love team yeah. Coco. Um, they hit three of their four key points it was a no yes 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 they had level four twizzles all around great rhythm dance from them I really enjoyed it yeah uh, I also really really enjoyed their free dance I mean I just I liked their whole yes. weekend and you could really tell that they were really enjoying themselves during the free dance mm-hmm. I think they kind of knew they were just like you know like we we like got this like we've been skating together we have such a great connection let's just like do the thing you know yeah and Tim's on a high after receiving his Japanese citizenship so what better way than to go out and win an HK trophy so like I mean their fluidity and glide across the ice in their free dance was so 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 nice the midline step sequence I absolutely loved it was really gorgeous but did you see Misato lip syncing the entire way oh my gosh (laughs) so cute a regular Tiffany Tiffany Zagorski we've got you a new friend (laughs) we've got you a new friend (laughs) but congratulations Misato and Tim a well-deserved victory Okay, let's move on to the next event, which was honestly kind of a mixed bag here. Uh, We're going to talk about the men. We had a lot of quad attempts. We had a lot of single axles. And we had a lot of standings that were determined by very, very, very little things uh, like singles that that could have potentially been doubles. (laughs) A lot of pop jumps. Look... We've had Shiseido sponsorship at Cup of China. We had, you know, the Russian ice cream at Rostelecom. Really, at NHK, I reckon that Pop-Tarts really should have been the sponsor for the men's free skate because it was pop oh, no. central. All the boys <laughs> were popping their jumps. Like, their toaster was glitching or something. Like, it was just, it was chaotic. This free skate was chaotic for the men. Except for, <laughs> except for Yuma Kagiyama, because he just, yeah, ex- he Yuma. was on a, he was on a plane of his own. Like, he was just like, oh, my, my toaster's working fine. Thank you very much. <laughs> my toaster's great. Uh, yeah, he won the event by around 50 points. Insane. Deserved, but insane at the same time. Truly. All right, let's 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 start off with a couple of young beans. Uh, we did mention that a bunch of them came just from Junior Nationals. So let's start off with Kao Miura. He's our baby 15-year-old. His ISU bio hobbies are watching baseball games. Oh, um, he was... I know. He was eighth in Junior Nationals last season, and his short program was to Feeling Good by Michael Buble. And he was wearing gloves. Cow, come on. <laughs> Please. Oh my Please. gosh. I mean, as a Canadian, I always endorse Michael Bublé, but I really do feel like we need some variation within the Michael Bublé. He has such a vast discography that I feel like we could do more than just feeling good. We can feel many different ways with Michael Bublé. I'm sure that he goes through a wide range of emotions. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been able to write so many songs to fill so many albums with. Very, very, very true. And considering Christmas is coming up, you know, he'll probably deliver his 80th 80 millionth Christmas Christmas album. Christmas <laughs> album. <laughs> but Cow had um he had a wonderfully gorgeous quad toe and then he goes and does a triple flip single toe. And oh then boy. he falls in his spin and okay, so he went into a camel spin and he slipped off his toe and that Skaters will know that is always, always awful. It's like when you do a waxel or you slip off your loop entrance edge. You know, unfortunately, he got an invalid element for that too. But he was like, I was like, oh, you're definitely a talented 15 year old. And then in the free skate, he skated to The Lost Samurai. And I was like, ooh, okay. Very different from Feeling Good by Michael Bublé. I mean, I'm sure that samurais can feel good as well, but just not (laughs) in quite the same crooning way that Michael Bublé does. (laughs) I I reckon Tom Cruise in The Last Samurai definitely feels good. Um, 
maybe feeling good about his appropriation, but that, yes. that's a discussion for another um, time. <laughs> definitely. Tell me about it. Um, but Cow definitely felt good in this free skate because he delivered an absolute killer skate. He came second in the free skate and managed to pull up to sixth overall from his eighth position in the short program. This was insane. He had he opened with a lovely quad sow that had like great speed and confidence and all of that. And he doubled the opening quad toe, but then he went ham. He was just like, okay, I planned a triple flip, triple loop here, but I'm gonna do a quad toe, triple toe instead. And then <laughs> poor baby was so tired in the second half of this program, but you could like tell he was trying to give it his all while like internally wheezing. <laughs> It was it was very chaotic good. Very chaotic good. He is very much zero or a hundred, you know? Yeah. <laughs> very, very but, much zero or a hundred. But a great first outing for Calmira. Definitely on our radars. Um, let's move on to another young bean who has made a name for himself in the past, but didn't really have a great outing this competition, and that is Shun Sato. He is 16 and has probably one of the best ISU bios out of any single skater <laughs> to ever have existed. His ISU bio hobbies. Well, it, there's one, but it is take care of Demekin, one kind of goldfish. Oh, Joss, one kind of goldfish. I love it. This is so amazing. I love how specific this is. One kind of goldfish. Put it in my bio. I'm going to change my Twitter bio. One kind of goldfish. <laughs> How many goldfish do you reckon would uh, span the length of Hanyan's uh, triple axel? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Put, put it in my bio. Demican yeah. in brackets. One kind of goldfish. <laughs> so cute. Oh my gosh. Today was the first Monday back to work after Thanksgiving and today I truly felt like one kind of goldfish. It was it was definitely <laughs> a one kind of goldfish day for me going back to work after that long weekend. Yes. Ugh. Okay, back to Shun. He came first in last season's Junior Grand Prix final and was sixth in last year's World Junior Championships. So we all know he's a very talented skater. Um, in a short program, he skated to Pirates of the Caribbean, choreographed by Benoit Richard, I believe. And I think that Alexei Pachenko would definitely approve of this costume. I mean, I think he would approve of the whole program. I cannot see him looking at a Pirates program being like, eh, no. <laughs> he would yeah. approve of the whole thing. Yes, but this wasn't really a great short program. He opened with a quad toe and tagged a single toe at the end. And I was wondering, like, why he wouldn't leave it, you know, just leave the quad toe plain as... But his next jump was a planned quad lutz, but he fell on that. Oh, poor Bean just didn't have a great short. Yeah, I think this is one of the cases of uh, potentially being tired and trying a lot of quads uh, because he could have potentially heard that Junior Worlds was canceled and was like, you know, tech with it. I'm just going to do it and, and see what happens. Yeah, and like fair game. Um, his free program was to selections from Audio Machine. He came fourth in the free skate. I mean, the free skate in general for the men <laughs> was really chaotic, so don't read too much into the placings. But um, it was a better skate than his short program, but still, like, not his best. But you can you can definitely see the talent this boy has. Yeah, you can for sure see the talent that he has. Uh, just the fact that he did try so many quads. And, you know, sometimes he does land them. You know, you can definitely tell because of all of the obvious, like, the standings that we were talking about earlier that he has it. I think that... You know, he was just trying a lot here and it just didn't happen to work out today. Yeah. All right, let's move on to Keiji Tanaka, whose ISU bio hobbies are unfortunately just watching movies. Oh, but no. But he really did. What he lacks in personality in his ISU bio hobbies, <laughs> he really brings in his yes, uh, hip, hip, does. chin, chin short program. <laughs> we we love hip, hip, chin, chin. Um, this, the stoning work, the... <laughs> Okay, the costume though, like, honey, I, I could probs do it better, but I was like, oh, okay, we get more hip hip chin chin, so like, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, but, yeah. some maybe uh, Kelly Highland work if you're watching Dance Moms. Oh, gosh. Uh, rather than like a JoJo Siwa. I think JoJo Siwa's stonework far exceeds Kelly Highland's stonework, so. 
Aww. I think Ke- Kelly worked on uh, KG's costume for him. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, but oof, that triple axel was a big hit. And then he goes on and does a double flip triple toe. <laughs> KG. Oh, this is a lot of kind of what's happening this weekend. It's just like, oh, great element. Ooh. <laughs> Bad element. Bad yeah, element. But the choreo, though. I-, I love KG doing this choreo. It was, it was just great. Yeah, I, I mean, this is not, I will have to say, this is not my favorite hip hip chin chin. My favorite hip hip chin chin is Ashley Wagner, but it was a valiant really? hip hip chin chin effort. I do enjoy Ashley Wagner's hip hip chin chin, but I'm uh, I'm still wanting Tessa and Scott's hip hip chin chin to come into its full fruition because it didn't get like the best season when they competed it. However, I do love Ashley's hip hip chin chin. It was great. Imagine um, if Tessa and Scott did Hip Hip Chin Chin and Moulin Rouge. Oh, we oh would all implode. Every single one. I of mean, us. their their <laughs> short dance at the Olympics was like it was good, but like it, personally, it wasn't Hip Hip Chin Chin level. Imagine, in my personal opinion. So imagine how. <laughs> anyway, back to KG. His free skate was to the Sherlock Holmes soundtrack, which I absolutely love, and I love that he skates to this. It's, I love it. It's and so it was him. very yeah. I it love is the very motif. Him. Yeah, I love the motif in the soundtrack. He always picks these costumes that look like 70-year-old men in Key West, Florida. <laughs> um, he just has this feel about him. And like this like weird, creepy, quirky uh, motif in the Sherlock Holmes music really does that uh, Key West energy a lot of justice. <laughs> love it. Love it. I mean, I also loved his quad style double toe. It was great. And then very much in the same oh, no. kind of theme as his short wah, program. Wah. Wah, wah. It was just KG poppity pop pop time. Yeah, he did one single axle, and then I think he decided to go for another axle later on in the program, and then singled it again. So, <laughs> wasn't cute for him. No, but it was a big mood for us uh, Goldfish Monday peeps. <laughs> This was definitely one kind of goldfish. (laughs) Yes, but at least he smashed that step sequence at the end. It was a level four step sequence and he threw everything he had at it. And I just really, really enjoyed it. You could tell he was disappointed in his skate, though, but his PCS definitely lifted him up. Yeah, I, I always love his personality. He's got kind of a big quirky kind of personality the costumes show it the music show it I think that the combination of his short program and his free skate music I love the contrast and I think they both really scream KG's personality um he did come fourth overall because he got bested by 18 year old Lucas Toyoshi Honda who came in a surprise third Oh my gosh, but his ISU bio hobbies is also one of my favorite things because it just it lists one thing, but that one thing is eating delicious food. And I'm like, Lucas, you and I are on the same page here. Oh my gosh, maybe when we uh, become a food podcast, like I suggested at the beginning, we yeah. can invite <laughs> Lucas as our first guest. Lucas, uh, let's get down pod at gmail.com if you would like to be our first guest on our food podcast. Absolutely. Um, he's coached by Mia Hamada and her team. His choreographer is the beautiful Kathy Reed and he is the bronze medalist from last season's Japanese junior nationals and he came 11th in last season's senior nationals as well and boy oh boy did he really really make an impression here so his short program was to SOS Danterian en Detresse and he had a gorgeous opening triple axle I was like woof okay he didn't have any quads he did a triple flip triple toe um, but he's such a lovely skater. I'm a fan. Oh my gosh. He has that like something, something. Like Lucas has swag. I was like, Lucas. Uh, it is. Especially in his free skate. Oh my gosh. Seriously. Okay. We'll talk about that in a second here. But literally when I saw yeah. that SOS pop up on the screen, I was like, is he skating to SOS by Rihanna? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, just imagine. 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 Oh my gosh. Okay, but hear me out, okay? Like, we should do a program to SOS by Rihanna, but also SM by Rihanna. <laughs> I, I would do the SM part. You can start off with SOS. I'll, I'll stick to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh my gosh. Okay, wait. Short program to hip hip chin chin, free skate to SM by Rihanna. We need it. We need to manifest this. Someone's going to do it. I'll come back just for that. (laughs) (laughs) 
Anyway, his free program was to James Bond, the Spectre soundtrack. It, it was kind of pop central. He didn't have any quads, but the triple jumps that he managed to land, he did pretty well. He had a gorgeous triple, it's triple toe, like oofed. He has such spring in his legs. I was like, oh my God, can you teach me how to jump that high? It was so great. And there was a pretty decent like Bond-esque step sequence in there. And I was like, yeah, all right. I like you, Lucas Honda. I like you. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, he was also one of the victims of the single axle. All all these men with <laughs> a single axle. Uh, one thing that I did note is that I think he needs to finish his movements a little bit more. I think his lines could be a little bit more extended. Uh, there were a lot of bent elbows and bent fingers where they did not need to be. Yeah, I, I kind of noticed that as well. Um, it wasn't too noticeable for me, but, you know, I think that's something that Mia Hamada and Kathy Reed will definitely iron out um, and get rid of in the future. But he's got such promise in him. Like, I'm excited to see where he goes. Yeah, he really does. Uh, he had a lot of appropriate James Bond themed finger guns in his <laughs> free skate. Love a finger gun. Yes, we do. <laughs> Uh, I also love a sequined jacket, and I mean like a fully sequined jacket, not like a Kelly Highland sequined jacket, <laughs> but a Jojo Siwa, the full Jojo. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, let's move on to our silver medalist of the event, Kazuki Tomono. He is 22. His I You Buy Your Hobbies are actually, okay, I'm, this is trumping. I'm sorry, Shun Sato, but this actually, this actually takes the cake for me. Kazuki's I assume bio hobbies are, get ready for this, ramen hunting, music, and shoe polishing. I love him. I feel like people always forget about Kazuki because obviously the field of Japanese men is so deep right now, but he is just such a character. He, okay, apart from his character, he has so much attack and commitment on the ice. He just has like a presence, he you know, does. like I, I just really enjoy watching him. Like, like I was saying about, I don't remember who, but like if someone was new to figure skating and was just watching and, and just kind of like had never watched figure skating before I feel like he's someone that like they would genuinely enjoy like kind of just like knowing nothing about the sport mm -hmm. I agree yeah and you can definitely see that in both of his programs his short program was to chroma three uh he had a gorgeous quad salco gorgeous triple axle great spins but I was not a fan of the turtleneck and then the bedazzlement around that neck area and Kazuki like he does have this personality and character right but he also has like a very interesting uh design and costume choices I might say <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mind the free skate costume I thought it was pretty pretty standard yeah it was pretty standard he he borrowed the Russian men's kind of design type deal um I, I mean he got the red theme for Moulin Rouge uh, so he got that correct, but I, he really did. I think Moulin Rouge, his free skate, was definitely a time for him to shine. Uh, it's choreographed by Misha Gay. If you didn't notice throughout uh, throughout the program and the choreography that he delivered, um, but he had such a crisp quad toe, double toe. It was I, I really like when he's on. It's just it's just beautiful, and I reckon that. If Yuzu can pay tribute to his favorite skaters through his programs, then we appreciate that Kazuki is paying tribute to Tessa and Scott here. Um, <laughs> especially that middle part where he's doing that like head choreography. I was just like, mm, all right, I see, I see that, I see that nod to Tessa and Scott. I love the head choreography. Uh, he really warmed up with all the extra weight on his beza bedazzled turtleneck from from a short program. It's, it's the stretch <laughs> and the warm up for for his head choreography. Yes, definitely. Um, but the choreo sequence at the end, like he was giving it his all. There was like so much conviction. It was great. And he got, like three fives and two fours and I was just like thank you Misha Gay because like this is 100% Misha Gay brand but also very Kazuki brand yeah oh my gosh so on brand I feel like if someone was to do a Moulin Rouge program especially with this cut of music that's so similar to the Tessa and Scott version it would be someone with a large personality like Kazuki I just I want him to like continue skating forever just so we can see the programs <laughs> that he skates because they're just going to be great no matter what they are, I reckon. Yeah, and Misha should always choreograph them because they are, they are a match. I love it. 
I yeah, I reckon too. Okay, let's move on to our winner of the NHK event. He is a little bean. He's 17. His name is Yuma Kagiyama. His ISU bio hobbies are game and listening to music. Oh, that's kind of a letdown after shoe polishing ramen hunting. Kazuki. I know. Kazuki can join Lucas and us on our first food podcast, our <laughs> Let's Get Down Food podcast. Oh my gosh, wait. And can... also Allison Reed uh, from our last episode yes. because she enjoys late night pizza. So all, all, all five of us can can star on our food podcast. Oh. <laughs> now I'm getting really, really hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and it is dinner time. So like, I'm yeah, my mouth is salivating now. <laughs> anyway, Yuma left me and the judges salivating with his two fantastic skates. He is so small though. He oh is so gosh. tiny. He is okay. He's so cute. But yet another victim of the single axle in the short program. <sighs> another one. Even Yuma. <laughs> they even got him. Even Yuma. But like it's so funny. Yuma only doing a, like a single axle. So the element is invalid because you have to do a double or a triple axle. I, I, I think it's double or triple for men. I think so. But he still topped the field in the short program because of his opening two quads, <laughs> which was uh, the quad out, triple toe and far out. That looked way too easy. And it like reminded me of, you know, when Javier Fernandez just does his quads and it just looks so effortless and cause they're so tight and crisp. That's what this, that's what his jumps reminded me of. And he's got great spins too, but then he popped his axle. So Ugh. like, Yuma, I mean, it's, it, it's fine. Good. I mean, he still yeah. won by like almost 50 points. So <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> yes, you, you can pop but... your axle. It's fine. Everyone else did as well. So yeah, I mean, if everyone else does it, I mean, you can do it too, right? That was uh, Lance Armstrong's uh, <laughs> excuse. <laughs> uh, I, I did note, however, that in his free skate, uh, his shirt and his bottom, we really need to work on the color wheel, guys. Like, they're two different shades of green and two different color families. However, I did get shades of uh, Misha Kolyada, Let's Get Loud. This is like a baby Let's True. Get Loud. Let's Get Loud Junior. Oh. <laughs> That's so let's cute. Get, let's get moderately volumed. <laughs> That's what this costume is. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> let's get, can you turn it down? Because there are old people around. Let's get uh, Alexa, please turn up the volume to about 55%. That's what this costume <laughs> is. <laughs> okay, but Joss, this was, his free program was, he changed the music of his free program kind of after he announced his initial music, but he changed it to Avatar. Yes, the Avatar soundtrack, but he is wearing a green costume. <laughs> oh my god, I didn't even make that connection. But now that you and I was uh, like, make the connection, it's it's. I was like, okay, so like Yuma, I was thinking about this. I was like, Yuma's like not big or tall enough to be an Avatar because they're like gigantic, they're huge. But we still stand, you know, the music choice. But then I was like, okay, you came out in a green costume, like. <laughs> I, I, are you the tree? In, like, are you the trees and the foliage in the movie? Like, this he is a same not pass the gates at Pandora. They wouldn't let him <laughs> in. <laughs> Definitely. This is the same conundrum as Sasha Trucifer going, I don't want to be Juliet or, you know, Romeo in the program. And we're like, so who are you? But all the other roles um, are filled by Zach Donahue. So what's <laughs> left? <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, so you, I, uh, you know how everyone's just like, oh, but I played the tree in my fourth grade play. You is just like, I'm going to play the Avatar tree and I'm going to absolutely kill it. Um, <laughs> but only get moderately volumed, not quite let's go. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but only moderately volumed. We, we still got to be respectful. You know, it is a foreign world to us after all. <laughs> um, but oh, damn, his quads, man. He had an insane quad sow and like, far out that quad toe triple toe mm, mwah, chef's kiss yes the spread eagle the full like proper spread eagle and then i was like at the end of the program i was like spin little bean spin like you can do everything oh uh, my gosh and at the end of the day his tes was 105.71 like he cracked the hundred oh i mark. saw that i was like you get those triple digits you yes get them, Yuma. yeah and definitely like when you skate that well and only pop like 
like moderately volumed avatar costume, we also get moderately popping jumps. So like we didn't go absolute chaos. We only popped like one or two. So like in the grand scheme of things, when you pop one or two jumps at this event, you win by 50 points. <laughs> yes, it's very true. Uh, his his knee bend is also like mini baby Keegan Messing. He is great knee oh, bend. Love it. He does. All Japanese skaters are so well trained in like knee bend and it's stuff. It's true. But definitely baby Keegan Messing. Baby, let's get loud. So <laughs> let's get moderately loud. Let's get moderately Keegan at this point in time. He can wear three quarters of a cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> and three quarters of the belt buckle, Alberta belt buckle. Um, <laughs> all right, so congratulations to Yuma Kagiyama for winning his first Grand Prix title. Well deserved. And how about let's move on to ladies? All right, why don't we start off with Young Yu, our only non Japanese skater here? Uh, Young Yu skates for Korea, obviously. And oh, unfortunately, she had not a great turnout for the short program. She was unfortunately in last place. Uh, from the start, just didn't quite look right, fell on the triple axle, and just couldn't quite pull it together for the rest of the program. Just not a good outing for her. Yeah, and she she actually got, so her triple axle she fell on, that was called under-rotated. Her triple lutz she fell on, that was called under-rotated. Then she managed to pull out a triple flip, triple toe, but the triple toe was called under-rotated. It was just, it was a disaster for her. Um, but, I mean, I liked the costume. She was skating to um, Mission Cleopatra soundtrack as well as Istanbul Grooves. Yeah, and she used to be coached by Tom Z, but now she's coached by Mia Hamada, Tammy Gamble, and, you know, Mia Hamada's team. And she apparently trains in Osaka now, so that's interesting. Um, but yeah, just last in, in the, uh, last in the short program was just, that was a blow. Um, but I didn't quite like this program for her. I think that anything with um, a character, for example, like Romeo and Juliet last season, um, she does better with because she's not the most expressive skater. So I think that when there's a character that she needs to play in a program, she tends to do a little better because, you know, there's something to work off of. Definitely. Uh, I am also, uh, however, per personally, always mildly uncomfortable with like vaguely Egyptian movements in Cleopatra programs. I'm like, where are we going to take this this time? But that is just a side note. You know what? They should uh, they should pull a so you think you can dance and actually get uh, actual authentic choreographers for different dance styles yeah. in uh, and consult with because that would be really 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 That'd cool be so nice and for we big step up exactly big 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 step up so anyone who wants to do um, like an African dance or an Egyptian program or something like that take a note from so you think you can dance and pull in some great choreographers because I know and we know that there are a lot out Plenty. there. Plenty. And plenty out there. Anyway, uh, I don't think she can get any authentic choreographers for Lord of the Rings, though, because that was for her free skate. It's um, true. We <laughs> cannot call in Bilbo Baggins, although we can potentially call no. in Bilbo the Sheepadoodle, Meryl Davis's dog. <laughs> I am actually so shocked that we have gone this many episodes without me talking about Bilbo the Sheepadoodle because Bilbo is my favorite skater dog, just FYI. <laughs> oh, are we going to have a skater dog ranking over on our Instagram and Twitter? We should do Oh that. my gosh. Potentially. And potentially. And I'll just rank all the dogs as number one because I just love doggos. <laughs> I know because all the doggos deserve it. Very, very true. But Bilbo is my true number one. <laughs> mm, he is very, very, very cute. Um, but in this Lord of the Rings free program, Young Yu had her redemption moment. Um, she landed her triple axel. And overall, there were a few small errors here and there, but, you know, generally it was a really good skate and she climbed those rankings. She really did. Uh, I did also note, however, that this commentator uh, called her Ying Yo. And what? I was like, there is literally no excuse for this. Both her first and last name are literal words in English. And they're actually very common <laughs> words in English. So there's literally no excuse to uh, mispronounce her name. This is very much a case of there is no I in young you. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I found it uh, very, very disappointed, but not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> the theme of a lot of things this year. Um, <laughs> let's move on to Marin Honda, whose IT bio hobby is video editing. Oh. Which I was like, okay. okay. I'll take okay. it. Okay. Um, but Mar, <laughs> blessed Marin Honda. Um, she got lowballed as hell in PCS. As as she does. As she does. As she does. Which, like, come on. That It's sacrilegious, honestly. When are they ever going to give her the PCS that she deserves? When she pulls out the technical content for it. Oh, no. <laughs> Marin. No. So her short program was to The Giving by Michael W. Smith. Gorgeous program. Gorgeous dress. But Oh, very nice. Like, as per usual, as per usual, Marin always has stunning dresses. Um, but triple flip called with a Q, level three step sequence, double axle that was called under-rotated. Although, me watching the slow-mo, I was like, I don't think that was under-rotated. Like, chuck a Q on there, maybe. But, like, hmm. But, yeah. 29.36 PCS, not even 30. Oh, I was I just like... It bullshit <laughs> we hate to see it we hate to see it but we do not hate to see her la la land free skate because she and hanyan are the only people that are allowed to skate to la la land the only people <laughs> yeah i i will only tolerate these la la land programs <laughs> i could watch her brush her teeth honestly she is just gorgeous she has a great set of teeth too fyi <laughs> fyi she's got that star quality about her um, but, oh my god. These jumps Seeing, really did not work out for her nope. here. And the calls on them just, so triple flip, exclamation mark, double axle, under, triple toe, under, triple loop, under, double toe, under, double axle, under, Euler, star, double sow, star, because it was repeated, just, oh, Marin, oh, honey. No. Uh, yeah, I mean, a first uh, in the first half, a couple of jumping passes went well, but then everything just kind of started to fall apart after that double axle, triple toe, and it just kind of all went downhill from there. It's Marin's a real Marin's an enigma for me because she is a wonderful skater, but the jumps just—I mean, she did win Junior Worlds, but then the jumps just went downhill and now she's pretty much just doing the easiest jumps that she can like very very basic level almost like you're in an exhibition um and that really that really sucks maybe she should try ice dance look she should because that flow and everything she'd she'd work wonders in ice dance um but I mean, I'm not, I wasn't, I was never a huge fan of her jumping technique. It all seemed a bit very, like, out of place for her general, like, how she skates. But I'm just, like, with everyone, I think I'm just sad that she doesn't, you know, pull off those harder jumps because otherwise she'd be, she'd be up there. She'd be so up there. She really would. I feel like really literally no one was on her side this competition because not only did the judges give her that that abomination of PCS score, but also when she was sitting in the kiss and cry, they were playing I Did Something Bad by Taylor Swift. And I was like, oh, no. can we not play this song, please? This is oh, not the song that you need we, to be playing at this moment. Can we not time. have pathetic fallacy at this moment? It's just like not called The for. judges have done something bad here. Ugh, Yeah. But speaking of Taylor Swift, do you know how, like, a couple of episodes ago I mentioned, I think it was in Cup of China, I mentioned how Asian countries, when they play Western music, it's always, like, a couple of years behind. <laughs> this arena music was pumping out that One Direction, that, like, <laughs> old Taylor Swift stuff. And I was like, see? See? What I said was true. I mean, look, I didn't mind it, right? We love some throwback one day. We love but... it. <laughs> yes, but... Yeah, Marin just <laughs> Marin. Ice dance waits for you. Yes, it does. Um, Yuhana Yukoi. Oh goodness, do I have things to say about her? Uh, okay, first first off, let's start off with a short program. Uh, no, 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 no. Actually, I'm going to interrupt you here because her eyes. You buy a hobby, growing vegetables. Growing vegetables. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. I love it. <laughs> I love it too. Not gonna lie, I really love oh it too. Gosh. And I'm like, you've got personality. That's great. Okay, starting off with a short program. Sorry to interrupt. Keep going. Oh my gosh. Okay, so the short program. First of all, I was like, Elsa, Ice Palace Ooh, for one. Yeah. <laughs> Ice Palace for one. Ice Palace because for one. you know, quarantine. You know, we've got to be safe. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we all need an Ice Palace for one at this point in time, especially <laughs> yes. in the U.S. Uh, but I, her jumps are all so nice. They're just not quite at the caliber of the leading ladies here. This was a great They're program huge, for her. Though. Yeah. They're huge, but I feel like she doesn't get the rotation done quick enough. Yeah. But they're huge. They're huge. Yeah. They're, she's got great elements, but I, I feel like she doesn't have the extension and polish at the end of her stuff, which kind of just drops her PCS and just kind of ruins the whole grandeur of what her jump was. I think she, like Lucas uh, from Men, is uh, just one of those people that kind of just needs to extend the elbows, extend the fingertips all the way, pretend like, as they say in dance, like there is a string at the end of your fingertips and someone is pulling them, uh, much like our favorite Pinocchio friend, Daniel Grossel. (laughs) Uh, Just kind of extend all the way out, you know, and and you'll get those lines that the lines and extension that are, are necessary. Speaking of lines and pulling and all that jazz, we have uh, our favorite chaotic free skate of the entire season. Oh, this is truly my favorite chaotic free skate of the entire season. The music is Tom and Jerry at MGM by Scott Bradley. <laughs> you, heard, you heard me right. Tom and Jerry, cat and mouse. Oh my gosh, we were literally talking about the potential of this program in our off-season news episode, yes. literally the first episode that we ever recorded together, which I'm sure if we listen back to it is such a hot mess, but we literally wrote this <laughs> down and we were like, I wonder what this is going to be like. And ladies and gents and other folks, uh, th- this did not disappoint at all. It did not disappoint in terms of chaotic energy. Now... First things first, did we see the rainbow, like, stone bedazzling she had on the cuffs? Like, Yuhana. There Yuhana. was so much going on. It was a mini there was tux, so- <laughs> a silver True. skirt, rainbow cuffs. There was so much here. So much here. I- I'm honestly lost for words. <laughs> okay, um, so because I'm lost for words, I'll let ISU commentator speak for me. Uh, he said, uh, in response to our opening double axle, he's like, an octane start. And I'm like, wow, pretentious. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, this is very, it's very NASCAR of him. V- very NASCAR. Um, very, maybe, maybe they needed a propane tank in Tom and Jerry at MGM, you know? Tom and Jerry get up to all sorts <laughs> of shit. Um <laughs> But um, at the rest of the program didn't really go so well. But uh, in ge- she wasn't really selling Tom and Jerry as much as I think one could sell Tom and Jerry. Like she had the facial expressions going down. But I feel like because you're skating to Tom and Jerry, you really need to up the camp. Really? I, I mean, the jumps were not, the first half was especially not going well for her. But I feel like she relatively pulled it together in the second half. Uh, she had so much like fighting spirit. I was like, okay, I accept. Yeah, she does. Um, but like literally yeah. I wrote down. <laughs> It's in my Twitter drafts. I said, there are cartoon fight noises. I am howling. (laughs) These cartoon fight noises, let me tell you. This should have honestly, this should have honestly been a free dance. (laughs) So good. I feel, I feel depleted having only Yuhana on the ice. And I'm like, this is Tom and Jerry. Where is her second? Where is her other half? Like, then you can dress up as cat and mouse and we can like properly roll separate and have this, you know, awesome kind of kitsch, actual Tom chasing after Jerry. We can have a full <laughs> acting, like act out of it. And you know, the PCS would be probably be through the roof. Like, <laughs> Yuhana, take this to Ice Dance. We'd love it. Oh my gosh. Maybe she and Marin Honda can do a Tom and Jerry Ice <gasps> yes. Dance together. Do you really think that Marin has a Tom and Jerry energy though? I don't think Marin's chaotic enough. I think that if she went to Ice Dance, I think the sky is the limit for her. The sky being Tom and Jerry, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> With the fake fight noises. <laughs> 
Okay, but where I feel like because the costume already had so much going on, she honestly should have had like a cheese, like at, somewhere on her costume, like decal Jeez. on, or like a, a mouse trap, or like something or rather, or like just maybe some like drawings of Tom and Jerry. Oh my gosh! Just to but complete she, the look. She did have a Tom and Jerry face mask though in the kiss and cry. I know. Oh my oh. gosh. I feel like, Maybe okay. Maybe had a headpiece or something. I tweeted at someone after seeing this and I was like, small business Saturday, Johanna, drop the Etsy store name, support small businesses because everyone and their mom is making face masks these days. But I really want to know who made that one specifically for her. You know, she should honestly follow in Lisa Took to Misha's footsteps and start a clothing line, but her clothing line should be themed after each one of her programs. And so this limited edition 2020 uh, will be Tom and Jerry line. <laughs> oh my gosh. Everyone should wear face masks and the kiss and cry that correspond to their programs. Like Nathan should wear a bus seat face mask. Mm-hmm. Although I'm not sure how sanitary that would be if the face mask is directly Ew. coming off of the bus seat. <laughs> Ew, that is an disgusting concept. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yuck. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I, I think uh, Yuma could also wear an avatar face mask in the correct avatar color. I Or maybe just a picture of the trees from Avatar. Or just Who a knows? picture of the it could, trees. It could, be, it, could be any, it could be anything, truly. Um, you know, there's, there are so many possibilities out there. Uh, Kaori could wear a pleather face <gasps> mask for her Matrix costume. Oh my god, and then skate an exhibition to Rihanna's S&M. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Or just have a face mask with Keanu Reeves. What do we think of this? Por que no los dos? <laughs> Why not both? Pleather Keanu Reeves. That's a concept. Very big concept. But we will get to Kaori later on. Um, Tom and Jerry. I feel like World Team Trophy needs this program. <laughs> World Team Trophy. Kick it off with Tom and Jerry. It was a chaotic free skate, but we live for it. We'd love to see it again. <laughs> oh my gosh. Truly love. Why don't we move on to our next skater, uh, Mai Mihara, the triumphant return of Mai Mihara. Uh, She took some time off of uh, competitive skating. She was struggling with uh, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, uh, which can really, really take a toll on especially joints and recovery time. Um, with everything that happens with with JRA. But this is her first competitive skate back on the ice. And it was so good to see her back. She is such a darling and a cutie. And yeah, just the struggles she she went through last season. Um, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, but JRA and RA in general, there's no cure for it. So this is, you know, an ongoing struggle. But I really loved seeing her back. Um, it was so great. She was so emotional after both her short and free skate and the crowd gave her standing ovations for both and deservedly so. Um, she is 21 this season. Her ISU bio hobbies include watching figure skating and Japanese kendama as well as listening to music. And for those who don't know, Japanese kendama is, you know, the, um, the ball and kind of, uh, like a handle cup thing where, you know, you you play with like the ball and the handle are attached and then you try and get the ball onto the like I don't really know what you can you call it it's kind of like a cup and ball game it's it's very very Asian and I had one growing up did you have one growing up it was like um I did not but I know exactly what you're talking about because I'm sure that my parents considered purchasing one for me at some point in time (laughs) (laughs) but I was like oh this is so cute um but she's so delicate on the ice and a joy to watch. It was so good to see her back. Her short program is to It's Magic from Romance on the High Seas, choreographed by Laurie Nicole. What did you think of this? I just think that her joy was really just radiating. You can tell how much she was happy to be back on the ice. Yeah. Um, I think that she did look a little bit tentative with just kind of everything in general like I don't think she was going like a hundred percent full out you know but but I think that everything went pretty well for her in general yeah definitely um I think that you know I think she was just happy to be there and maybe her mindset was just whatever happens happens I'll just try and do what I can at this point in time which is absolutely fair enough because she's been away from competition for for quite a while uh her free skate though was to fairy of the forest 
and it was she's truly a fairy of the so forest. So nice. She had such such a gorgeous costume and oh, she was so happy afterwards. It was like it was the cutest thing ever. Yeah, in the same way that Hip Hip Chin Chin is very much a KG Tanaka program, I think that Fairy of the Forest is very much a Mai Mihara program. Definitely. And for her choreo sequence, we got a lovely proper spiral sequence and I was just like, yes. Um, she came third in the free and fourth overall. Like she came seventh in the short program, despite having a decent short program, lost a few points on the table for, uh, due to levels and um, some rotation calls. But, you know, I think a lot of people were kind of sad that she didn't get on the podium, but I, she, you know that she's happy with what she's done and... Yeah, it was just so good to see her out. Yeah, I, they gave her standing ovations. I think every yeah, like you were saying, everyone was just so happy to see her. She was so happy after her program. She was like jumping oh, no. for joy on the ice. I was like, we need this, you know. The only other person that that radiates joy, like Mai Mihara, who we'll talk about later, is is Kaori Sakamoto. Truly a joyful, joyful. Who could not human. stop smiling. Absolutely. So congratulations, Mai, on two great skates at NHK Trophy. It was so great to see you back, and we cannot wait to see you skate more. Um, and But let's move on to our bronze medalist of the event. Almost a surprise bronze medalist, it is 16-year-old Rino Matsuki. Um, she, last season, she placed third at JGP Riga, but didn't make it to the uh, Grand Prix final. She came ninth in Japanese Junior Nationals last season, but... Damn, did she make a splash here? Yeah, she really did. I think it wasn't really like a surprise so much as she was like an underdog. I think folks who have seen yeah. her skate before, um, kind of like a dark horse, I, I guess. But I think folks who had seen her skate before were probably not surprised that she had such a great outing. I think she has super great flow. She's a very like a delicate skater. Mm -hmm. I think that is yeah. very much her style in the same vein as like Anna Sherbakova, who we were talking about several so. episodes ago, like very much the same energy. Um, the elements don't look like Skate, 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 jump. Skate, 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 jump. You know, like very yeah. good flow in and out of each element. And I, I'm not a fan of skate, 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 jump. That's just not not what I'm looking for here. But she doesn't do any of that. I love it. Yeah, she's so light across the ice and has beautiful extensions. She really reminds me of a young Mawasada. Oh, yeah, totally. And she's she's such a cute little baby. Like she is 16, but like her face looks like 12 and she's got braces on. And I was just like... Oh, you're so cute. Although she was skating to the color purple for a short program. And I was just like, um, it's like when Anna Shepakova skated to Perfume, the story of a murderer. I was like, um, is this really appropriate? Yeah, I'm like, we need to read the history, read the history, understand it. But I mean, who knows if she actually did that, but. Um, but yeah, uh, her free program was to Perhaps Love by Jones Denver. Very kind of in the same league in terms of style, very soft, lovely lyrical music. Um, she's a solid, solid skater. Like she came second in the free skate, had a few edge calls for her triple flip, but otherwise she she did really, really well. Yeah, I thought her free skate was so interesting and so lovely because there was almost like a, not really like a surprise surprise, but like there was a triple loop and a double axle that almost seemed like a surprise in the sense that like they just flowed so well in and out of the choreography. I was like, oh. Yeah, it came out of oh. nowhere almost. Yeah, I it really was appreciate that. This is another skater that I think, like uh, Kazuki Tomono, that if, like, you know, you're not familiar with figure skating, I think you would really just, like, enjoy her, you know, like, enjoy her performance yeah. and her presence on the ice. I think this is another skater like that. Definitely. And so I think she was a deserved bronze medalist of the event because she did put down two very, very good skates. Now let's talk about our silver medalists. And like the ISU commentator just couldn't say anymore, was the favorite of the event, apparently. It's oh Miss Wakaba Huguchi. Favorite of uh, everyone except for our judges, who uh, hmm. <laughs> we need to have words <laughs> with. <laughs> Boy. Yes. So let's start with her short program. Yeah, uh, but but okay, hang on. Let's do her ISU, her one okay. singular ISU bio hobby, which makes her automatically <laughs> my best friend, which is shopping. And yes, I am one of those ladies who like shopping. Ooh, oh my gosh. But <laughs> her <laughs> one ISU bio hobby is shopping and I love it. So sue me. I love shopping. <laughs> and so does Wakaba. So 
<laughs> All right, so her short program was to Bird Set Free by Sia. Um, and I think that she asked Kaori for costume advice after that No Roots costume, because this was a damn nice costume for Wakaba. Don't say those words. I know. I'm <laughs> sorry. The, I'm the sorry. words I being No Roots. Have, I missed that program. I know. I literally, in my Kaori notes, I literally referenced No Roots by saying, we shall not speak of her short program from last season. So I don't oh, actually I say No Roots, it. but now I say No Roots. So oh. like... It's Who are blasphemous. You? I, I know. I'm sorry. Just, it's awful. Anyways. I apologize. <laughs> Anyways, sorry. In the short program, everything else went so well besides the triple <laughs> axel. I was like, oh no. She was hitting them in warm up. They looked beautiful yeah. in warm up. So I was like, fingers crossed for the free But I mean, the triple axel was called clean. I mean, she did fall, but it was caught clean. So, like, it was. We'll take that. Um, but duh, it's clean. Like, Wakaba's triple axel is gorgeous. Um, she had level four spins and steps, except for a flying camel spin that was level three. But I love this program, and especially the end choreography. Um, that was great. You know, when she does that whole knee slide and goes back, I was like, Wakaba. She loves it. You can tell yeah, she loves it. Yeah, hundred percent. I reckon, like, she'd be like, hey. Um, can we put this in the program, pretty please? <laughs> yeah. Can we put this in the program? Yes, absolutely. And her free skate, though, it was to Poeta and Flamenco Passion and Soul. I think it was choreographed by Massimo Scali. I, I may be wrong, but Triple Axel, honey. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Woo-hoo! I am sobbing. Twitter just exploded. Oh. I really... Everyone was overjoyed. I was so happy for her, like everybody else. And I really like this program for her. I think the music cuts are great. There are many accents and kind of like good highs and lows for her to play off of. Just the judges. I mean, there were small errors here and there, but judges. Judges. (laughs) Yeah, she was hardcore lowballed in PCS, in my opinion. Like a lot of NHK skaters were in general. Um... Especially but, the ladies, especially yeah, the ladies. especially the ladies. But I think Jackie Wong posted on Twitter a thing about how, in all the other Grand Prix, everyone's just like, "Where we love our national skaters, so we're going to inflate their scores." And Japan's just like, "We think you're lowballed internationally, so we're going to lowball you even more." <laughs> oh my gosh! And it's just such a shame because, like, this is not how you promote your country skaters right you know like this is not how you get them spots for things I mean obviously this is not how you get them spots for things in general but like this isn't how you promote them right this isn't how you say like hey I want you to be recognized on an international stage and I'm not saying that we should have like American nationals inflation let's not get crazy here but like no Russian or Russian competition or, inflation yes nothing like that but I mean this is just not how you do 84, it 84 Camila Valieva right um but yeah it's just not how you do it I think that in a traditional season you know we'd have international judging panels and all that stuff so I mean but these scores count and although we obviously have a full Japanese judging panel don't treat it like nationals and like global everyone at an actual quote-unquote international event where you know you know points can count for I mean they don't really count for too much this season but in terms of like score rankings for the season and all that stuff but for Kaori Sakamoto she did get pretty good scores she did get everyone else was lowballed besides Kaori I mean like Kaori did great but like she also meddled pretty much in the men's event she pretty much topped the Rostelecom ladies as well. So like, what's going on here, judges? But anyway, um, finishing off with Wakaba, I think that she can, she knows she can do a lot better as well. Um, She's going to really, really, really want to improve on her two skates here. Uh, Japanese Nationals is in four weeks. So I think she's going to come out the gates charging then. I do too. I I think it's just such a shame that her triple axel was called uh, with a Q because literally someone slowed it down frame by frame on Twitter and it did not look Q at all to me. It looked fully rotated. All these judges only, okay, judge four up in here. We need to have a discussion here because judge four gave it a minus two GOE and I just have to say here. The what? Yeah, what what's happening here, Judge Judge Four? Uh, we we gotta have a discussion here. 
Um, also, uh, the only one that gave it a positive GOE was Judge 2. And I was like, excuse me. <laughs> Come on. Not a fan. Not a fan of these folks here. But they definitely were a fan of K.O. Sakamoto, even though she goes and half decapitates them in her free skate. It's true. I mean, maybe they were slightly frightened that she was going to actually decapitate them in her free skate. Okay, so let's talk about the short program that is not the short program that we want for her, but nevertheless, <laughs> a very lovely short program. It is to Concerto on Ré Mineur by Bach and Bach a la Jazz. And Kehori, honey, your edges and flow, it's like butter. She can skate on Ugh. over me any single day. Any single day. So nice. So nice. Uh, her spins were all level three besides one. Uh, her step sequence was also level three. Um, however, jumps, all very nice here. The only thing that I didn't love about this and... Obviously, it's because we love the No Roots costume. Okay, okay. But you said it. You said it. <laughs> Sorry, I said it, but I truly love that costume. This costume just doesn't do it for me. Yeah, neither. Neither. It's not like a horrible costume by any means. Like, because also because I have high standards for Kaori, but it's like, it's not the cut either. I think it's just the colors aren't combined very well. But yeah, it's no short program from last season's costume because that was just pure gold. That was literal fire. I was like, oof, we love it. But uh, she was so happy at the end of her short program, which made me happy. So yeah, she was definitely the, you know, the clear leader going into the free skate. She just had such a rough year last season. And yeah. to see her happy, I was like, you're going to do this. You're going to do this, this competition. I feel this for you. Definitely. And aren't we just blessed that Kaori kept her Matrix free skate? She kept something. <laughs> she kept something. <laughs> although we won't speak of her short program from last season. Um, because I'm <laughs> thinking that she's going to bring it back for the Olympics. I'm. It's... It's not actually, but I'm just oh manifesting. Gosh, imagine. I'm manifesting here, ladies and gents. I'm manifesting. Imagine if that program went to the Olympics. It would be just like Adam Rapons, let me think about it, at the Olympics. It would bring that kind of crowd energy. Joss, this is why I'm currently not devastated that she's not keeping her short program because I am trying to manifest that she will. She did not keep <laughs> it to bring it back for next season. That that's it's the same that's where energy I'm, as, yeah. as let me think about it. It's happening. That's where I'm heading. That's I'm trying to not get like too disappointed and instead putting uh, all of my hope and energy into a uh, potentially irrational uh, hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, her free skate to the matrix. Love it. That triple flip, triple toe was right on the music. She had level four everything steps, step sequence, spins, and I was just like. Fuck yeah, that ending triple loop after the choreo sequence, like, bam, it was all just, it was all fire. I was like, yes, Kaori, yes. Oh my gosh, okay, amazing. I'm done. <laughs> I feel like, you know, in this entire event, I feel like she was judged fairly. I feel like she got the scores that yeah. she deserved. However, no one else got the scores that they deserved. I feel like if you're going to judge people harshly, judge everyone harshly. And if you're going to judge yep. everyone fairly, judge everyone fairly. But I mean, I am glad that she got the scores that she deserved, especially after such a, a disappointing season for her last season. It's so nice to see her happy i took so many like photos of my tv because i was watching this on peacock just of her like smiling at, at, at in her interview i couldn't stop smiling like my cheeks were hurting at the end of the program because i was smiling so hard but like i think you know this might maybe the judges were just like we'll give you like restellicom cup scores and like do quote unquote proper our style judging for everybody else because, like, her uh, PCS was almost seven points ahead of Wakaba. So Wakaba had the second highest PCS of the night for, for the free skate. Seven points ahead of Wakaba. Like, are you kidding? It's a lot of points. Like, that much? That's really a lot. Big. Like, Wakaba's no, not a shit skater by any means. Like, come on. But then her technical element scores, they were over ten points ahead of the second best TES score, which was Mai Mahara's. It's a lot. And, like, yes, we know that Kaori's GOEs really take it up to the next level. Deservedly so. Yeah, deservedly so, but, like, that's a lot. That's a lot. Really, yeah. It definitely is. But, I mean, she was super happy to see her scores at the end. I think she ended up on a 229, 
which was gigantic, and I'm just happy to see her happy, honestly. So happy. The only thing missing is the Keanu Reeves face mask. It's the only thing missing. <laughs> okay, our next co- Japanese nationals, Keanu Reeves face mask. Come on. Yeah. We'll pay for it. We'll, we'll pay, pay for it. it. It's all good. Support small businesses. <laughs> Yes, and I think that is a wrap on our NHK Trophy recap. Let's head into the Kiss and Cry. So we're going to start off with our book, as we always do. And the book that we chose this week is a murder mystery type book. So content warning for violence and death, if you are sensitive to those topics. And the reason why we chose this book is because it is a Japanese thriller, first of all, and it is described in the blurb as a cat and mouse chase between detectives and criminals. And who really embodied a good cat and mouse chase but Johanna Yukoi and her Tom and Jerry program? Uh, This one's for you, girl. (laughs) Uh, So this book is called Out, and it is by Natsuo Kirino. And so like we were saying earlier, Out is a thriller and the story opens describing the different levels of dysfunction and the personal relationships of several women who work in various factory level jobs in Japan. Uh, So they are not in this society in high regard because of the jobs that they hold. And one of these women, Masako, she ends up murdering her husband, and she and her three co-workers have to hide his body and cover up the murder. And in the aftermath, they all become intensely anxious in fear of one of them cracking and revealing everything that happened. Uh, she and her co-workers are all women, and I specify this because gender plays a huge role in how they're seen in society, uh, seen by law enforcement, and their expectations and roles in their personal relationships. I loved this book. It is super intense, very, very thrilling. I think it's perfect for a cold winter day. It's one of my favorite mysteries of all time. Um, And I read this book actually several years ago. Um, And again, it is called Out by Natsuo Kirino. So I guess the next thing that we wanted to talk about in our Kiss and Cry is that we finally got a trailer, an official trailer for the Yuri on Ice movie called Ice Adolescence. And even more important than that is that it was revealed, I think on Twitter, or actually I think in Amber Glenn's maybe Instagram stories, that she oh, maybe was, both. Maybe yeah. both, potentially both. Uh, that she was a part of the creative team that worked on this movie. And these are literally like two of my favorite figure skating things and people coming together. It's, it's amazing. I'm so excited for this. I think everyone is, really. I saw Lisa Hudaiberdieva on Twitter just screaming about this Yuri on Ice trailer. Um, it's got so many fans and we're all so excited for it. And especially knowing that Amber worked on it. Like, did she say like three years ago? Um, oh, I mean, it might as well have been three years ago. It's It's been so yeah, long. I cannot imagine like keeping quote unquote a secret like this. Like I just want to spill this out to anyone and everyone. Oh my god! Just gosh. like anyone on the street. Like, yo, I worked on the Yuri on Ice film. And they're just like, oh, imagine. I don't care. I'm like, well, you should. <laughs> <laughs> imagine. Uh, but yes, this is the movie that we have been waiting for for so long. So just like personally Yuri on Ice is like it was so important to to me and my husband when it came out we so before uh at our wedding the entry music so when folks were just kind of like filing in uh just to like take their seats and stuff and to choose their seats we played instrumental Yuri on Ice music so we played Eros we played Agape we played uh the Yuri theme we played History Makers King JJ literally everything (laughs) uh and also I think we talked about this in and maybe our get to know us episode, but uh, our ring bearer, who is me and my one of me and my husband's best friends, uh, we actually purchased a Makachin tissue box holder on the internet, <laughs> and we had my other best friend, who was my matron of honor, who's great at sewing and sewing activities. She removed anything from the inside of this tissue box holder and she stuffed it uh, added a new lining stuffed it and added two ribbons that were our uh, wedding colors on the top and tied our rings to it so makachin tissue box holder became our ring holder basically our ring pillow for our wedding (laughs) 
<laughs> so we're very excited for the movie. This is bringing back so many memories. Oh, literally so perfect. Um, we were literally like hardly friends at that time. <laughs> I know. How weird was that? But then as soon as like the the music at your wedding came on, I was just like, yeah, this, seal the deal. Welcome to the family. Like, you're not allowed to leave anymore. <laughs> oh my gosh. If I could have a redo of my wedding, literally the one thing that I would change is that you would be in my wedding party. <laughs> oh my God. Ugh. But seriously, guys. <laughs> my heart was, hurts. <laughs> that's that's all right. You can be in my wedding party. Definitely. You'll definitely be in my wedding party. Okay, okay. Definitely deal. fine. Deal. Um, <laughs> but ugh, honestly, so, the wedding was just so so perfect there was Yuri and ice theme music all of that jazz there was the up theme it was honestly cry central but <laughs> also like heart central and so that is why we are both so excited for it i think Yuri and ice means a lot to people for a lot of different reasons and just the amount of reach it has gotten is absolutely insane and deservedly so because it's an amazing amazing show and so I cannot wait for this movie. Honestly, it couldn't come any sooner. Oh my gosh. And I, I mean, don't don't say that too soon because we actually don't know when it's coming at all. Oh, shit, <laughs> we, we don't shit. have a release date, but I mean, let, let's not talk I about can that wait, part then. of it. I can wait. <laughs> I mean, we've been waiting. We have practice. I think that's it for this episode. Yeah, we are going to take a mini break. The only episode that we're actually going to record between now and the weekend of Russian and Japanese nationals is we're going to do kind of like a special casual thing. We talked about this a little bit ago, but we're going to do a Rostelicum Cup exhibition slash Las Vegas Invitational episode. And I think we're just going to like really enjoy ourselves and laugh a lot in that episode. There are a lot of programs that were skated that I think we really want to talk about. So that'll be coming up, but we're going to take a mini hiatus until nationals roll around in in several weeks here definitely so next episode is just going to be a lot of fun and laughs nothing too serious we're talking about exhibition programs and all that fun stuff so be sure to tune in if you want a really fun and light time i'm claudia and come chat with us at let's get down pod that's l-u-t-z get down pod on twitter and instagram and if you want to work with us shoot us an email at let's get down pod at gmail.com if you like this podcast and are on the support small businesses train like Johanna Yikoi, please give us some five-star love. We would really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for listening. We will talk to you later. Bye. Bye.